The early church fathers on baptism. Paul alludes to infant baptism when he tells us that baptism replaces circumcision. Colossians 2 verse 11. This is why the early Christians baptized infants on the eighth day after birth. The eighth day after birth is when Jewish boys were circumcised. Those who contend that infants shouldn't be baptized have a faulty understanding of what baptism is. With baptism, there is an infusion of grace. Grace is what enables a child being raised in the faith to understand his or her need for God. Without grace, there can be no salvation. That is why the church links the sacrament of baptism to it. While baptism is no guarantee of salvation, the graces received can enable a person to accept God's free gift. For as the scripture says, no one can say, Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 3 If you cannot even do that without the aid of God's grace, you surely can't see your need for salvation without God's grace. Note also that the early church administered baptism in three ways, by immersion, sprinkling and pouring. The Didac from 70 AD says, After the foregoing instructions, baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit in living or running water. If you have no living water, then baptize in other water. If you are not able in cold, then in warm. If you have neither, pour water three times on the head in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Before baptism, let the one baptizing and the one to be baptized fast as also any others who are able. Command the one who is to be baptized to fast beforehand for one or two days. Justin Martyr from 151 AD wrote, Then they are brought by us where there is water and are regenerated in the same manner in which we were ourselves regenerated. For in the name of God, the Father, and of the Saviour, Jesus Christ, and of the Holy Spirit. Matthew 28.19 then they receive the washing with water. For Christ also said, Unless you are born again, you shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. Irenaeus from 189 AD He, Jesus, came to save all through himself, all I say, who through him are reborn in God, infants and children and youths and old men. Therefore he passed through every age, becoming an infant for infants, sanctifying infants, a child for children, sanctifying those who are of that age, so that he might be the perfect teacher in all things, perfect not only in respect of the setting forth of truth, perfect also in respect to relative age. Tertullian 203 AD on Baptism No one can obtain salvation without baptism especially in view of the declaration of the Lord who says, Unless a man shall be born of water, he shall not have life. Hippolytus of 215 AD in his book The Apostolic Tradition Where there is no scarcity of water, the stream shall flow through the baptismal font or pour into it from above. But if water is scarce, whether on a constant condition or on occasion, then use whatever water is available. Let them remove their clothing, baptize first the children, and if they speak for themselves, let them do so. Otherwise, let their parents or other relatives speak for them. Origin The church received from the apostles the tradition of giving baptism even to infants. The apostles to whom were committed the secrets of divine sacraments knew there is everyone innate strains of original sin which must be washed away through water and the Spirit. Cornelius 1 As the heretic Novation seemed about to die, he received baptism in the bed where he lay by pouring. Cyprian of Carthage, 253 AD As to what pertains to the case of infants, you, Fidus, said that they ought not to be baptised within the second or third day after their birth, that the old law of circumcision must be taken into consideration, and that you did not think that one should be baptized and sanctified 
within the eighth day after his birth. In our counsel it seemed to us far otherwise. No one agreed to the course which you thought should be taken. Rather, we all judge that the mercy and grace of God ought to be denied to no man born. In the saving sacraments, when necessity compels and when God bestows his pardon, divine benefits are bestowed fully upon believers. Nor ought any one be disturbed because the sick are poured upon or sprinkled when they receive the Lord's grace. Gregory Nazianzen Have you an infant child? Do not let sin get any opportunity, but let him be sanctified from his childhood, from his very tenderest age. Let him be consecrated by the Spirit, 381 AD on baptism. John Chrysostom, 400 AD. Thus those who are yet catechumens, because they make this their object, how they may defer baptism to the last, give themselves no concern about leading an upright life, and those who have been baptized, whether it be because they received it as a child, or whether it be that having received it in sickness, and afterwards recovered glory of God, so it is that neither do these make an earnest business of it. Ambrose of Milan The church was redeemed at the price of Christ's blood, Jew or Greek, it makes no difference, but if he has believed, he must circumcise himself from his sins in baptism, so that he can be saved. For no one ascends into the kingdom of heaven except through the sacrament of baptism. For unless a man be born again of water and of the Holy Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Apostolic Constitutions of 400 AD Do you also baptize your infants? And bring them up in the nurture and admonition of God. For he says, Suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not. Augustine, 408 AD It is this one spirit who makes it possible for an infant to be regenerated. When that infant is brought to baptism, and it is through this one spirit that the infant so presented is reborn. For it is not written, unless a man be born again by the will of his parents, or by the faith of those presenting him, or ministering to him, but, unless a man be born again of water and of the Holy Spirit. The water therefore manifestly, exteriorly, the sacrament of grace, and the Spirit affecting interiorly the benefit of grace, both regenerate in one Christ, that man who was generated in Adam. Jerome, one thing I will say, and so end my discourse, that you ought either to give us a new creed, so that after baptizing children in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you may baptize them into the kingdom of heaven, or, if you have one baptism, both for infants and for persons of mature age, it follows that infants should also be baptized for the remission of sins after the likeness of the transgression of Adam.